Dear everybody, that's right, I'm not just writing to a developer today, I'm writing to you guys. Everybody, you, your friend, your mom, probably in this day and age. The gamer demographic is aging, and adult women make up a sizable chunk of the gamer population. Anyway, I'm writing to you today because I'm still emerging from the brain fog haze created by my first baby steps into the Dark Souls universe and didn't have time to research a proper sciencey topic like usual. Don't like it? Cry about it! It's my 10 minutes and I have some ranting to do. We have got to talk about spoiler warnings. Speaking of, spoiler warning! This video contains spoilers for the 1986 title Castlevania for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The rest of the video is going to be gameplay of Castlevania to hopefully create a safe, spoiler-free environment for everybody. Friday, I did a video about the Dark Souls franchise and included some footage from Dark Souls 3, including the first boss, whom you encounter in the first 10 minutes of the game, and god fucking damn it if someone didn't cry spoilers in the comments within like 40 minutes of the video going live. When did your spoiler management become my responsibility? No, I'm serious, genuinely, why is that my responsibility? And like, I don't just mean my my responsibility, it's mine, it's everyone's. Somehow, without anybody declaring war, a massive culture around preserving an unspoiled experience has cropped up. Folk have taken it upon themselves to police every piece of content, whether it's a video, an article, or fucking tweets. There's always somebody who has a problem with any degree of detail mentioning anything that doesn't have the appropriate warning attached to it. This is something I see all the time on our channel, like since our Dragon Age series into The Witcher and when I started making my own videos even months after Fallout 4 release, people were on my jock about spoilers. Seriously! I did a video about the politics of the different game factions and people were pissed! And you know, it's almost never, ever someone complaining about themselves being spoiled. I get that. Really, I would. I mean, I still think it's your fault and your responsibility to manage your intake, but I get the emotion. You're just going about your day, consuming things that are there to be consumed, and BOOM! Some shit was there that you didn't think would be there, and fuck, it just bums you out. But no, I have never seen a message like that. It's always, oh, you know, like, you should put a spoiler warning on this. Not, you know, for me, but for other people, because they may be more delicate and sensitive to these spoilers than me. Not me, though. I'm a big, strong man. I spent the past few days trying to track down the origins of what I'm deeming toxic spoiler warning culture, and you know, I can't find it. There's some references to Alfred Hitchcock bemoaning people giving away his endings, but the whole protecting other people from spoilers thing seems to be relatively new in the scheme of things. And, like the aging millennial that I am who has no self-awareness, I'm going to blame the most readily convenient thing, the internet. Of course, I don't necessarily think this is a bad aspect of the internet, but merely a consequence of two of its biggest advantages. Instantaneous communication with millions of people across the world and the widespread availability availability of content. As a brief aside, I expect content is a possible candidate for the Time Magazine banned word of 2016 or 2017, mostly because of its ubiquity. We spend all our time on our screens, which, you know, is fine, but there has to be a reason to be there, so there's all this stuff. Content. And in this case, the content isn't really the problem, but rather our relationship with it. That is, we are consuming it all the time. You're not gonna find me complaining about that. I mean, if it weren't for that, I'd not have a job. Regardless, we, collectively, kind of have this habit of just clicking, or to be more modern, tapping on whatever looks good, reading or watching only halfway, and zipping off to something else that looks interesting. For a long time before this, the grand conversations about media were relegated to in-person conversations, where it was it was really easy to stop someone in their tracks if they started talking about something you hadn't seen before. You could just be like, yo, bro, chill, I haven't played Castlevania before, and you'd talk about something else. That's not what we do anymore. Spoiler warnings and filters have been well integrated into sites like Reddit, which honestly I think is a great thing. For one, it reduces trolling. One of the only times I've genuinely had something spoiled for me was some asshole who was going around aggressively shouting plot details for a popular game that everyone wanted to play just to be a jerk. And so, in those contexts, I get it. But when it comes to videos and articles that have subject lines and headlines and titles, why are we requiring the same degree of scrutiny from writers? It stands to reason that a video about Dark Souls that's coming out in late April of 2016, for instance, is gonna have 
have something that a hardcore purist anti-spoiler person is gonna know to avoid. I mentioned that I've only been spoiled about twice. Once was someone actively seeking out people to spoil them, and the other was entirely my fault. I remember it like it happened yesterday. I was on the Mass Effect wiki reading about something and boom, spoilers about the Rachni. Uh, that's how you pronounce it, by the way, Andrew? Rachni? Uh, anyway, I was pissed. And I wasn't pissed at the wiki. It's not the wiki's fault, but my own. I should have realized I was playing with fire, being on a game wiki, reading about a subject that may contain spoilers for one of the titles I hadn't played yet. I have a theory about why the only people lamenting about spoilers are people who are advocating for others. It's because people who are actually avoiding spoilers, like me, aren't watching the video. They know better. So, you know, trust other people, spoiler police. Trust them to filter themselves. They can do it, trust me. It's actually really, really hard to get spoiled. You just don't log into Twitter and you don't read articles or videos about the things you like. It's that easy. I propose a new paradigm. Instead of the spoiler warning, we go the other way with it. Spoiler free. This way, we just presume everything about a specific game or movie has spoilers in it, unless it says otherwise. Anyway, that's all I have to say. See you Friday with some artsy bullshit I pull out of my ass, and see you next Monday when I tackle some more science! Sincerely, Austin. Thank you everybody to listening to my rant about spoiler warnings! And I want to make it clear I'm not talking about trigger warnings or content warnings. I am talking about spoiler warnings, which are a completely different thing. I feel like some people might you take the argument and try to apply it to that. It's a different thing because you're talking about like actual psychological trauma with that. And I don't think people are experiencing psychological trauma when it comes to Oh, well, it is about Dark Souls. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to it yet because you're some kind of crazy person. And if you really like this video, like it. And I want to throw out a personal thank you to our Patreon supporters who make this show and every show we do incredibly possible. And they are awesome. They're the biggest fans we have. Every comment on our Patreon thing is like, Austin is so awesome and Austin is so sexy and I'm so happy to thank you to Patreon. They don't all sound like that. They, I'm, I'm, excusing myself.